Jushal's claim um, on the topic of the insanity plea. Uh, the claim I will be refuting is that the insanity plea is an unreasonable and unnecessary legal tactic. Um, her secondary claims are that the criminally insane have the mental capacity to make conscious decisions, that the criminally insane are emotionally aware of their actions, and that psychiatrics, uh, psychiatrists and uh, psychologists treat moral and social issues which cannot be solved using medical procedure or the law. The definitions she uses are uh, insanity uh, used only as a legal term. One must be so mentally impaired by a psychological disorder that they have no understanding of the nature or quality of their actions. Disease, an abnormal condition affecting one's physical body, and NGRI describing the term not guilty by reason of insanity. Her first claim that the criminally insane are uh, have the mental and capacity to make conscious decisions is um, misconception. Uh, she confuses the um, insanity with incompetency. Incompetency is um, used to describe, uh, according to uh, the Free Dictionary dot com. Um, uh, when it, uh, to describe the mental condition of a person subject to legal proceedings, it means the person is neither able to comprehend the nature or consequences of the proceedings, nor adequately able to help an attorney with his defense. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, that is what she is describing when she argues um, that they are unable, that they have the mental capacity. Uh, um, that is no in no way relevant to the case of insanity. Insanity, by her own definition, is where one must be so mentally impaired by a psychological disorder that they have no understanding of the nature or quality of their actions. Thus, thusly um, proving her first secondary claim incorrect. I'm going to move on to her second claim that the criminally insane are emotionally aware of the, the, their actions. Um, she backs this up by saying that um, uh, that the that they um, that criminals who are arrested under the um, under the, the pretense of criminal insanity are released and they become repeat offenders. While this, even if this is true, that. <clears throat> Um, the fact it is that, on average, uh, again, according to the freedictionary.com, um, using a encyclopedia entry, uh, the repeat offenders, on average, have longer detainment rates. So even if they become re repeat offenders, they'd be if they were charged without the insanity, uh, um, the charges of insanity, they'd be on the streets faster than they would if they were um, uh, the faster than they would if they were um, deemed insane. Um, moving on to her third claim, uh, she tries to prove that uh, mm, that um, psych uh, psychiatrists and psychologists treat moral and social issues. This has no relevancy to the f whether or not the insanity plea is or is not uh, a necessary tactic. Rather, it just tries to establish it as whether it's a disease or not. But she does have a claim that says that um, in, the, in court, a person must be held accountable for their own actions. Um, however, the insanity plea is there for in, in cases where one is not aware of their own personal actions. Um, using a hypothetical person, let's say a, a, a person is um, a, a, com a common uh, hypothetical example that 
a woman is on a date with a, a man, but during the date, um, a man, uh, the, the, her uh, person is, uh, slips something into her drink so that he can later have his way with her. If she agrees in this altered state of mind, it can be said that it was consensual, but was she in her right state of mind? Um, I do not believe uh, that is why the, I believe that is why the insanity defense is there for cases similar to that. So in conclusion, um, I, uh, I believe I have successfully refuted her claim by, um, by showing that um, insanity is there for those who are um, not mentally capable to make conscious decisions. Who uh, and that it's irrelevant that they are emotionally aware or um, or that they become repeat offenders because they are detained for a longer period of time, and that uh, and that um, everyone should be held accountable for their situations. Uh, thank you. All right, structural things are pretty clear. Um, you basically you know, recap the definition of insanity that the advocate presented, and that becomes an issue uh, throughout the debate because uh, the definition of insanity is really about, like you said, that first part, an inability to understand uh, their actions, to, uh, to uh, control or uh, represent them. The analogy that you draw at the end, I think, probably would make a little bit more sense at the beginning, and there needs to be an explanation about why this is a policy or procedure in the first place. Uh, the idea that somebody is held accountable for their actions when they are not in their right mind by, let's say, throwing them in jail for a uh, hundred years or even executing them uh, is widely rejected. and so. There is a there's a standard a premise that suggests that we consider that to be an unreasonable interpretation of what the law is supposed to do. And your analogy is an attempt to explain that at the end. It just seems like uh, that explanation needs to be clear from the beginning. On the first issue, when you say she's misconstrued the argument because she is confusing the insanity definition with the competency issue, I do see that there is a difference between the two, although it's still not clear to me how what the advocate said undermine, you know, would in any way uh, prevent us from reaching the conclusion that insan the insanity plea is unnecessary. Uh, you, you basically give us an explanation about what competency is and how it might affect the proceedings in the trial, but you don't tell us why uh, insanity continues to be necessary as an option. Uh, the whole argument sounded a little bit circular. It's very confusing at the end of the uh, day. Um, the second point where you talk about the awareness of their actions, uh, this is, you know, again, where uh, you've got this... Uh, these definitions about what constitutes awareness of their action or uh, who has responsibility. Um, you make an assertion that says that these people uh, would not fit in this particular category, but I didn't hear any evidence supporting that. That mostly is just uh, your claim. Uh, the last point, like I said, I think that's a You've got the right idea. I'm not sure the analogy works perfectly, but the right idea here is that people can't be held responsible for something that they have no control over, uh, and uh, that's what the law is concerned with, assigning responsibility, not just determining punishment, but deciding responsibility. And I think that that's where your argument comes in, and although it's an imperfect analogy, it, it clarifies the point that you're making, I think, a little bit more than some of the arguments did, or other arguments.